Good morning, Connections. It is Tuesday, June 16th, 2020, and I am Pastor Jeff Frank. Uh, glad you're here uh, to spend another morning with us. More importantly, glad you're starting your day right with uh, delving deeper into God's Word. A reminder, this is just the, the, the start. I encourage you to spend as much time as you need this morning in prayer and devotional time to make sure that, that the rest of the day is fruitful, for we are only given so many of these, and it is up to us to use them to their full potential. So let's get started. So had our pastor cohort, I think this is the officially the third but fourth meeting, um, our good friend Pastor Larry uh, led the teaching, which was a lot of fun, uh, about connecting with people and how to make uh, church attractive. Uh, we've often used the word uh, create, uh, make people sticky so they don't just visit connections, but they they stay and make it their home. A lot of great information. Uh, a lot of the things that, that Pastor Larry has learned over the years. He has been serving at Freedom Church now, I believe close to 25 years, maybe a little bit longer than that. So um, I've always felt at home while attending at, at, at Freedom Church um, and always feel at home when I return. So would love for that to be our reputation as well. So there's some things that, that we're going to, to pay special attention to as we build out the new facility to make sure that it it's, feels like home to everyone. And that's been difficult to do with borrowed space and older buildings, but we are given the opportunity to create a customized facility just for us. And I know that God wants us all to feel right at home. So um, that was a, 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 a worthwhile teaching last night. Also, we've got a lot of changes. You may have noticed that we changed up the, the intro page to our uh, morning devotional. That's reflecting our new logo. Along with the new logo, I am creating fresh content for the website. And as I create the fresh content for the website, it will also uh, change the, the look and feel, uh, hopefully a little bit more modern. Uh, and I know we, we kind of stand still and think of the internet as, as um, something that never changes, but the styles and, and ways that we present information on the internet are forever changing. Dylan did a, a fabulous job of putting the, the uh, website that we currently have together but it's probably a couple of years old now and needs, needs some fresh, freshening up and especially the content. That's the most impo important thing of a website and if we just keep re recycling the same information from years past, it sometimes doesn't reflect who we currently are. So that's in works. Also uh, in talks with Jason Duncan about building his uh, evangelist team and creating a drive-by prayer station at the new facility, 1900 South Monroe, as well. Um, we're trying to imagine what that might look like, but uh, we'll go along with the sharing the scripture on the, on the street corner. So I think that ministry has, has great potential, as well as, as Dave's outreach team um, are putting together hygiene packs, and we are including a little bit of information about each of our our, our leaders and uh, their favorite scripture. So that, that'll be cool. So if you get a hygiene pack or even the goodie bags on Sunday, we'll have some of that same uh, information in it. Something to share. As you know, we've been doing the goodie bags for uh, folks that attend on Sunday. And then we also send them home with bags to share with their neighbors. And so we want to make sure that they've got church information and they feel welcome to return to, to Connections uh, the following week as well. So all kinds of effort on that front um, as well. 
so that we get word out. We want to be sharing information as we approach uh, prayerfully the, the transition from our chapel to the more downtown location at 1900 South Monroe. So everybody can kind of track with us and know when that's going to occur. So um, great things ahead. So jumping back into our devotion, if you recall, we are talking about the five core values or uh, doctrine of Connections Church over the next several weeks. And along with that, as far as our devotion, we are going to move through uh, the Sermon on the Mount, which is found in its entirety starting in, in Matthew 5. So we jumped into that yesterday, and we are going to continue forward today in Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the saltiness... You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, this has a lot of, of great meaning. And the, the, the funniest thing is, um, I don't know, three, four months ago, I ordered a t-shirt. I enjoy wearing uh, Christian t-shirts out into public places. And usually I get quite a few reactions, good, re good reactions from, from Christians, some curious looks from others. But I have a shirt that simply has a light bulb on it and a salt shaker and nobody gets it and even uh you know people you know christians who are are curious and uh i'll say yeah salt and light salt and light and uh, nobody gets it so might have to retire that t-shirt because i get too many I, I think people think of other uses for salt other than uh the reference here that jesus makes so we think of salt and the first thing i think of with salt is uh, an old uh, colloquialism that we have of salt of the earth. If you are a person that's the salt of the earth, you are that person that's easy to get along with, even tempered, never, uh, you know, just the backbone of this country is built off of people that are salt of the earth. And if we reflect back to yesterday's teaching, when we learned two things, we learned one, that that God has prepared the hearts of those that have um, found contentment in where they are in life, whether that is, is experiencing poverty or experiencing uh, hardship, uh, that, that God, that the, those are fields that are prepared to receive salvation. And so Jesus calls those blessed. And then the second thing we, we learned was that when you receive that gift of salvation, that, that sanctification, that being made holy process, uh, we should see the attributes of God shining through. And so, you know, blessed are those that are, are uh, thought to be perhaps less, you know, when we consider what the world considers blessed, and as they begin their life as a follower of Christ, the attributes that, that are godly attributes come to the fore. So the peacemaker, the, the merciful, and all of those attributes we talked about uh, yesterday. And that reflects back to the people that we consider the salt of the earth. People that, that for no reason at all, because they have very limited income, they, they live a very modest life, but they always have a smile on their face. For the, the people that uh, seem to just be level-headed and never, you know, uh, never raise their voice and always have a, a word of wisdom to share. They don't, they don't push themselves forward in conversation, but if asked, they have intelligent, thoughtful words. Those are the people that, that Jesus is talking about 
here. Now, this idea that we have to continue to work at our relationship with God and press in is, is found in this passage as well. That you can have all of these attributes, but if you choose to walk away from your relationship with God and put it on the back burner, that sooner or later you have nothing left to offer because you are not tied into to, to the God's spirit and you are not tied into those godly attributes and you lose your saltiness. So it's a reminder that we need to continue to strive towards God throughout our entire lifetime. Sanctification is thought to be something that, that occurs immediately as we receive salvation and then a lifelong pursuit as God hones us into the, the men and women that he desires us to be. Now another interesting aspect of this salt, you know, we, we know that in our day and age, salt is primarily used to, to add flavor. And I like that as far as salt of the earth people, adding flavor, adding, um, you know, adding something, some extra. So hold on to that. And then salt in biblical times would have been used as a preservative. And so we remove the salt from uh, the world and the world is no longer able to be preserved. So salt, as far as the church and perhaps lends itself to this idea that we are not going to suffer the wrath of, of God but be taken out of this world before uh, judgment is you know perhaps found in this passage as well that we are the preservative we are are what's holding the door open and when the church is removed those opportunities end so we have some work to do and we have some responsibility to preserve this world and give those that have not come into relationship with God give them an opportunity to do so Let's continue forward. This part of the passage I'm sure you're more familiar with. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It's not about you. Praise God, he has, he has prepared your heart and brought you to uh, the place where you can receive salvation, where you, uh, now that preparing of the heart can be hardship, the preparing of the heart can be, uh, you've tried every path possible and you're at your wit's end and you're ready to, to, to give your relationship with God a try. Whatever God has done to prepare you for seeking salvation and asking and receiving the gift of salvation. But that's not the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story. Now, as you gain those godly attributes, it's not to, to be hidden and kept to yourself and, and you know, we build a bunker and we wait for Jesus' return. That has to be shared with the world. And you will hear me reference at least once a week, go and be the light in this dark world. And this is the passage that that stems from. We are called to be the light, to reflect God into this world. You complain that, that there's nobody you can trust, that, um, that the world seems to be tearing itself apart. Well, you need to consider that God has sent you to be the light. So before you look to why isn't anybody doing anything, you might want to step in front of the mirror. You are the light of the world. Do not hide it under a bushel, but share it with everyone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the people that have your attributes and are content wherever you have placed them. They are the salt of the earth. They, 
They bring peace, they bring comfort, they bring wisdom, they bring joy, and your presence. We thank you, Lord, that they, they shine brightly for you, that they warm a dark room. That was your intention all along, Lord. Your, the church was the answer. And you desire to build your church up so that we can send them out and the gospel message can be heard. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to draw us closer to you, that you have never given up on us, that you seek us each and every day. And all we have to do is look towards you. Lord, I ask that you would bless this day, that you would bring peace to our nation, that you would allow us to see each other with your eyes and see the full potential that's available to every individual that is walking the earth. Search our hearts, Lord, and rid us of our prejudice, rid us of, of the the things of our past, Lord, that we have drug into the the present. Free us, Lord, so that we can be your people. Give us your wisdom, Lord, so that we can navigate this day and have thoughtful words to share with all of those that you place in our vicinity. We love you, Lord. We can't do it without you. We won't even try. In Jesus' name, amen. Be the light. The thing that attracts me most to the people of Connections Church is you are the salt of the earth. You are the reason why the rest of the world makes sense. We have an opportunity to share that with our neighbors, whether they are here in in Florida or around the world. God has not forgotten us. He is alive and well and living within us. And it is up to us to share. Be blessed. I will see you back here tomorrow for another devotional. And don't forget, you need to make a reservation for Sunday if you'd like to attend so that we have your seat reserved in the sanctuary and your seat reserved on one of the shuttle buses. And you have till Monday, or I'm sorry, you have till Thursday morning to, to make your reservation. After Thursday morning, you will be making a reservation for the following Sunday. All right, be blessed. Share this message with others. Point them to it in Facebook. Thank you, Polly, for resharing Sunday's message over and over. That was awesome. Uh, need to do more of that so that we get the word out that people can can stay connected with us through Facebook and through YouTube. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow.